are going to have an experience right now that is very rare. So I am Nanakasha from nanakasha.com. I invite you to come on over. Um, hi, Enza. And become, oops, I didn't put this on. You can probably hear me. This would be better. Uh, to come over and join my list, you'll get the notifications of all these fun things that we do. And when we have specials and all about our retreats and lots and lots of information to help you through every single day of your spiritual growth. So what I'm so honored to do is to live my life and my soul path and my awakening path and my healing path and my self-discovery, self-realization, and self-love and self-acknowledgement path as my work with you and, and the world and my service to the world. It all blends together into one. It's, it's amazing. And so whatever you do, you don't have to also do be a spiritual mentor or something like that. Excuse me, my eyes are uh, so, these aren't even my proper glasses, but here. So I'm fresh out of the beach, out of the ocean. It was one of the most exquisite days. It was like clear glass. You could see everything. There was no waves, no disturbance, um, blues and greens. And this time of the year, um, the Gulf, my, my ocean uh, front yard becomes really gorgeous with colors and there's not as many waves, but this is, was really rare. So I got out there and I was doing my morning swim and meditation has become to where as we get closer to summer, there's just this beautiful, exquisite stillness. And so I can close my eyes. I sit on noodles anyway, and I swim upright um, because of my ears. So I'm looking across this blissful uh, expanse of, of beautiful blue and green. And to me, it's the infinite field. It is the field of bliss. It is the best way for me to sink in because I'm sitting in it and I'm floating effortlessly. So energetically, we want to pay attention to that, right? <sighs> And what are the signs? What are the symbols? What does this mean? What does the blue mean? What does the ocean energy water mean? What does it mean on all different levels? Because water is alive. It's a living conscious being. It's an element. Uh, lots of practices from Chinese medicine to uh, other practices of shamanic practices, indigenous practices, uh, pagan practices, goddess traditions, everything that honors the earth, we work with the elements, water, earth, air, fire, sometimes metal. Everything is alive. Everything is speaking to us. Crystals are speaking to us. Symbols like statues are speaking to us. This is Thoth and this is Kuan Yin. They're holding different energies, much more than just potentially masculine or feminine energies. They're ascended masters and they hold particular frequencies because they have particular wisdom. And when you resonate with one, you start to have a relationship with it. It isn't that you're worshiping something. It has nothing to do with an authority over you. This is about everything around us being a supportive, loving consciousness. Now, there's too many energies, like there's too many opinions in the world for you to follow them. And you don't want to, and you don't need to. When you start to hone and develop and trust and you utilize your intuition more and you unplug from the opinions of everyone else, this isn't required to be a hermit to do this. You can literally do this. My students and my clients are doing this in their daily lives. And they get to start to see that they're not that emotion and see that they're not the role they're playing in their marriage or with their family or with their friends or in their job, that they're actually evolving or they're different and they're starting to separate their true inner self, that inner authority that knows who you're designed to be because you couldn't be in a body if you didn't have a big plan. All right, it takes a lot of energy to become a descended God, to come from the infinite field. So when I'm floating in that, 
I'm like, oh, I'm one with the infinite field. And today I speak to everything, the water, the sun, the clouds, the sky. My name is Akasha. That is my spiritual name. It was gifted to me after many, many years of me not hearing it because of my own egoic beliefs. Oh, having a spiritual name is a little bit ego egotistical. It's kind of vain. I don't need that. And I was going on a lot of sacred trips and, uh, in, and I was in mystery schools and working with different mentors and shamans and going uh, to Bimini and going to e Egypt and going to uh, Sedona and going to just like going to the sacred vortexes and doing this work you cannot help but begin to realize how alive things are. If you go to Egypt and you go into the king's chamber and you have the fortune of being there without any tourists talking there, yakking their head off, and being so grounded in their 3D experience, they have no presence to feel the power in there. Or you could go in, you could tromp around and be like, hey, Marge, what do we have for lunch tomorrow? Okay, is this how you're going through your life? Oh, I'm too busy to take time for my spiritual growth or my body or my truth or to open my gifts or to trust my intuition. I have to keep going on this plan. And it's not easy because all of being in life is like this. And the dolphins are such beautiful guides for us because they're very advanced beings or very ancient beings or multidimensional beings, which means that they consciously live on these multiple dimensions of potential realities. So we know we have three dimensional dolphins during my retreats. Hopefully you'll come join me in July coming up, come on, uh, or December, maybe next year, we're looking into some of those. And what they show us though, is that they go down and they come up and they can jump. And that's like a whole different reality. If you look at water, then held by earth, and then you jump into the air, but it's all the same biosphere of, of consciousness that creates the planet and we're a part of it. We all have a body made from earth. We all have water in our bodies. And therefore, like the dolphins, they're more connected to water because they live in water most of the time, but they breathe air. And so they go up and they go down and they spin and they, they bring joy. They know how to create vortexes for their own protection. They play with bubbles in the, in the water. They know how to scan and see the energies and the underlying structure of the energies and the integrity of the energies. And then they start to see what's underneath it, which we would call, where is it blocked? Like your meridians or your veins, the veins in your physical body. Then they have an etheric body. They have a subtle body. Now the aura, the dolphins seem to love the aura. They've been talking to me all year i I'm well, they started talking a lot again last summer. And so I, I don't remember exactly, but they really, every now and then they started bringing up your aura. Now your aura is your physical etheric body right here. Okay. It's the first layer outside of what we call our physical body. Everything's energy vibrating, very complex energy. So you have meridians. These are subtle channels of energy that move through you that if they're blocked or clogged or too hot or too cold, this is what I call where you have attachments, karmic knots. When you can see energy, perceive energy, communicate with energy like I do, I'm communicating multidimensionally. When I scan you, do a soul reading or any other session with you, I'm seeing your field Okay, your luminous energy field or your light body, which is filled with a lot of structures. The dolphins have been telling us that if we focus on our aura, now we know a lot about chakras, which is fantastic because these are the ones, especially the personal ones that intersect with the body that we can have the most impact with. Uh, and I teach a lot of uh, light weaving and a lot of practices in all of my classes and everything. Intuition Awakening, which is coming up the summer camp, and um, 
how to activate your light body, how to cleanse and clear all levels, the meridians, the chakras, the pillar of light, the rainbow bridge, the rainbow light body, the subtle bodies, mental, emotional, physical, spiritual, financial, pain body a lot of people are talking about now. I don't like to talk about a pain body because I'm manifesting a pain body. I'm manifesting a layer. There's pain in every body. If it's in the mind, it's in the emotions. If it's in the mind and the emotions and it's anchored by a vow that was taken in another life, then it's going to show up in the body. And when we have a disease or a pain or an accident or uh, a loss or a breakdown or a big dramatic change, these are part of the soul path, but it's also part of the communication that we're not hearing when our mind is in pain, or we're not hearing when we need to leave that job, or we're not hearing because we're stuck attached to mental, cultural, societal, programmed, conditioned ideas about what's safe. I need all of the stocks, the bonds, I need a lot of stuff, I need a... a uh, title, I need a paycheck, whatever it is, and we were all taught this, that you were taught to perceive is uh, brings you safety. And what is responsible? How can you take care of yourself? Were you programmed to feel guilty if other people helped you, especially with money? I bet you were. Um, in money intuition, we, we go down into those, those patterns and people are still working through them in that class for months because they've been grounded so deeply, but this is not who you are. So the breakdown, the metamorphosis, this decade of uh, the grand transformation that's happening at every level on the planet, as she ascends, we ascend, we are part of that biosphere. So she has asked me recently, Gaia, the earth, uh, has asked for us to see her as a star. You don't need to seek, and you can, and you will, and it, they're coming through. Star seed lives on other planets. They are imprinted in you. You have many lives from your mission life in this started on another planet, perhaps. You've been to universities on many stars. You've been through different time, space continuums. You've been through so much, and this is the convergence point here. You're part of the Earth star. The Earth star is awakening in a way that's never happened, and you're a part of it. So the dolphin divination we're going to do today are readings for you guys. So hi, Olga, Marin, Kim, Brittany, Sylvia, Barbara Lee, Enza. Hi, guys. In the car with my mama, I saw your live pop up, and now you're in that car with us. Ah, hi, mama. Uh -huh. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you for sending your blessings, everyone. And so um, if you would like, uh, if you have a question in the moment, you don't have to worry about, uh, is this something the dolphins would know? This is a soul question, okay? So I'm going to do a couple of things first as we get into this. This is going to actually sort of be the, the kickoff to a fun new series we're going to do. So I'm going to share with you the schedule that's coming up. I've got um, some fun speakers coming on. If you know anybody you think would be fun for this, because it's going to be about dolphin messages, but it's more than that. It's the Earth Star uh, biosphere that I was talking about. The fact that we work with elements, that we work with crystals, that we work with nature spirits and trees and the land that you live on. It's its very sacred. Even if you don't own the land, you want to be blessing it, talking to it, why and in, mother, I am here every day. You want to honor everything that is alive. Today, I went for my ocean swim and I rescued two ladybugs. They, they look like ladybugs, but they were yellow and they were kind of big but with the polka dots. And they were like way, I, I swam way out there because it was so calm. And uh, it was still fairly shallow because we can do that. Uh, but there was this one little dude and I'm like, hey, traveler, how you going? And he's floating along. And then I went back and went, okay, what are the signs and the symbols and the synchronicities that are in your life? Are you too busy? My agenda was I'm here to meditate and I'm talking to the dolphins and I'm talking to the land and I'm calling in the people who are, who are optimal to come to the retreats and I'm bringing in the healing and I'm receiving codes from the meteor because the meteor is out here too uh, and um, in my waters and all these things and swimming, getting my exercise and, and being in this blissful state and all this very important to me. So <clears throat> what happens then is that I see this little beautiful little bug traveling along. <laughs> and, um, and the best thing about it 
is that he is, uh, she, I don't know, uh, is, is walking on the water. We, I, sometimes these spiders doing that. <laughs> and so I turned around and went, wait a minute. I've just asked my intuition accelerator course, my uh, small group, we do practice, practice, practice together. And uh, so I gave them uh, a little uh, assignment or challenge this week was to to look around and to really pay attention to the signs and the symbols. Uh, where, How is your spirit? <laughs> how is your heart? How are your guides? How is whatever is the optimal thing for you from a soul level that knows your plan, not the you that's in here trying to find your way through 3D with logic uh, alone. <laughs> it's okay to bring the spirit into logic, but what are you, you noticing? So we started discussing this on this channel. And so I've been, I do a lot <laughs> and I got some bug bites. And so I was looking at and this and this speaking to me and I live in nature and I have coconut trees and I have some cats that have shown up that are doing some healing on us in the land I guess while I foster them and love them and feed them for a little bit and so I'm like speaking to all of this all the time but here I am like passing a little ladybug way out and needed to get it onto my noodle and then he sat there so he was there with me and I swam with one hand and we hung out for about 30 minutes and then I go okay we're going to start going back to shore and I'm going backwards and at this point I have my eyes open and I'm looking across the horizon and sure enough I see another ladybug so I gather that one up at the same time some other little tiny flying bug landed on my green noodle as a little island and I took them back to shore and they dried off their wings and flew off so um, I know ladybugs have pretty good um, luck energy but i will be looking more into that i'll be speaking into that more because i was really preparing for this so um okay so anybody uh if you would like uh, a dolphin message please let me know um, in the text there and um i'm just looking for my sheet here where did it go it's not there okay got it um and so, ah, right on top, <laughs> too prepared for myself. All right, my beloveds. So I want to share with you the, the event that we're going to be sharing. This really, it's an experience. I want, I want to take the elements of what you experience on a Dolphin Healing Mayan Magic Retreat with me. And we do have one coming up, June 30th. You need to arrive. So let's talk because there's uh, definitely... If, if you're called, I had two people jump in like literally in the last week uh, for March and one of them had heard the message and then went, eh, I don't think so, and went about her life and then got message, 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 message <laughs> and called me back and, and put her plans together literally two, three days before. So when you're called, take action. That's all I want to say about that. And of course, please... Um, you can go to the shop. You can go to nanakasha.com slash retreat uh, if you get on. And also there's a link below here on YouTube. So what we're going to do now is I want to share with you uh, what we're going to do. So I, wa I wanted to do a new event, uh, a special with you. I love it when we do something daily together. And as we do that, um, I'm just going to continue to clear the space. And I've lit a candle and created the Infinity Healing Chamber. You've entered into sacred space. I never, ever live my life in any other way. So the message that's been coming through for me is I've been saying, well, what do I teach and how do I teach it? And I have so many years of experience and so much, so many different ways that I can teach the same thing. And I want to reach so many people. And I know that most of you are feeling this way. And this is you. This is where I was today in a, a beautiful ocean, even smoother and calmer than that today. But you are infinite. So you are a part of the infinite field and you are a part of everything and you are a separate individual being. So uh, a few months ago, we did a wonderful, wonderful uh, early March, I think, uh, 
We did a wonderful series that's here. There's a playlist. Please check it out and subscribe and get, I literally, Brittany's here and she said, oh, I was in the car and got the notification because she subscribed and gets notifications and she was able to then jump on right now. So that's what's uh, helpful. And uh, I am doing some chimes. Hopefully you're able to receive that. I'm also burning some Copal. So I want to bring you together in the next week Today we're doing dolphin divination and apparently receiving some messages. So this is what we're going to be doing this next week. And this is me here with the jaguar skull at the March retreat, um, our beautiful dolphins and some Mayan pyramids. And I've got a, a beautiful dear friend and incredible healer, the Genesis doctor coming on next week. And he's going to share with us his Mayan third eye awakening experiences and I want to bring the magic of, of the Maya, not the, the perceived bloodbath. And if you have a negative perception of the Maya or no perception, that's really what we've been taught. There's no truth to that. There were other cultures that did do some sacrifice. There's no proof the Mayans did that. And all of the current records were, all the records were destroyed and they were rewritten uh, by the Catholic friars later. So I don't know how you would trust somebody who, who did that, right? They destroy everything about you and then they rewrite your, your history. So what we want to do is instead, I only am interested in the light. So as I go to these temples myself, I'm going Saturday for the full moon. That's going to be part of this beautiful week together. There's no charge. So starting today, we're going to have just divination coming through from our dolphin realms and really bringing us up in joy because we've received a lot of shifts this year already. And uh, if you've lost things and been broken down and had magic open up, all kinds of wonderful things. But my spirit has been telling me, you have to share who you are. And I've said, well, okay, who am I? I know a lot of who, I, what I've done, what I know, where I've been. I've connected to a lot of lives, a lot of ancient powers. I've been to a lot of mystery schools. So I've reactivated those powers within me. I've worked with a lot of shamans. I do journeying. I speak with, you know, animals, with, with elements, with the uh, sun, moon, stars, and crystals, the earth, you name it. I can speak to it. So what, what is it I share and how? And this is where you can go find out more about the retreat and really reach out to me. It's best for that for us to chat. We take care of everything and it's a hundred dollars off right now. And that will help pay for almost all of your taxi from the airport, which we give you the contact. Other than that, we take care of it all, baby. So, um, oh, this is supposed to go later. Uh, uh, okay. So let me just fix this real quick because that got mixed up. So if you're on my list, you probably got my email. I hope you read it um, because I shared a beautiful gift from Teresa, this lovely lady here. And um, she came into the March retreat all the way from, where's, ah, here we go, all the way from Australia. And, um, and she's in the process of, uh, looking to, to do the same thing, to manifest coming back in, in July, uh, and for sure next year. And so it was a really incredible experience to watch somebody jump in when they hear a call and the dolphins asked me to share it. I had forgotten. She gave me this beautiful story, this beautiful testimonial, uh, as a gift. So, uh, okay. So here we go. So today we're starting with the dolphin divination tomorrow. I'm going to, uh, share with you a message from the rainbow dolphin spirit realm. Whoops. Let me make that big so you can see it easier. And, uh, the rainbow dolphin realm, uh, in the first series we did in, uh, February, March, it, you can find below, it's a playlist called Dolphin Healing. And um, all kinds of dolphin realms came through that I had no idea existed. 
crystal dolphins, rainbow dolphins, moon dolphins. I started channeling Perseus, who was a small uh, baby dolphin that I had just met that we're going to start working with in the retreats in, in the physical, who channeled through as this ancient being in a new body with a whole bunch of fascinating information. We're going to be having that on Friday. So Friday, I'm going to be an oracle for Perseus in the dolphin divination readings. Messages from my moon dolphin. That's what he told us he was. She is. Uh, partner Perseus. She's in a girl body, but she has the male name and she has that ancient name and she has that faded name. So she's really here to help us show us destiny and fate are only uh, tools that are gifted to us. She's, uh, she's telling me this right now. They're only gifted to us when we are ready to walk the journey of our own hero, of our own inner power. And the hero or heroine never knows the path, never un really understands the depth of which they're going to dive. And yet all that matters is that they listen to the call. So Perseus is coming in right now. You might just relax. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's why we never know what's going to happen. That's why I like to do everything intuitively as much as possible in the flow of the moment. You have a fate, you have a destiny. A fate is something that you feel trapped by, and it is a cursed and enslaved way of seeing your life design. When your life design, you want me to say that? Okay, there, <laughs> she's telling me to say, Nan, Akasha, to say, I call that your soul blueprint. It is the design that you put together for you, for your body, for your parents, for your likes, your dislikes, and the powers. And they were all for you to come to this moment to complete a lot and to grow and leap really into a new reality, a new earth, a new uh, individual being. And so she's calling it your life de design, right? Design, okay. So that was, yes. So as a moon dolphin, I'm coming towards the full moon and then this last quarter of the moon cycle, you want to think about abundance. You want to think about it, welcoming it, accepting it, preparing for it to come to you. Are you ready? Are you standing in the ocean like Akasha did today, arms wide open saying, yes, I'm ready to receive with ease everything that is optimal for me, for my highest good, for my dream life, for the soul my life intended. I have my arms, my heart open, my mind open. I am aligned with my divine self and I welcome, I'm making it easy for it to flow in. So as you move towards the full moon, I will be with you for the full moon and the full moon will be later the day that I come through and the next day, but I will be with you every day, whether I speak through Akasha or not. She doesn't know, but we plan to send a message through every beginning of each of our gatherings. And also we want to tell you that this is an inspiration that came from us, from the dolphin realms. We knew that Akasha was processing a lot of information and, and moving through her own healing journey. We knew that she was the channel for this information that must be cleared at this point to gather more people in all ways of gathering in the ethers like this or in the natural setting of three-dimensional entanglement. We can work with you on all levels. The strength and the speed with how we work with you in your soul's ascension, in your body's healing, in your recalibrating, not just to feel stronger again or younger again or to release the fear or all of that, but to align you to create a strong bodies, a body with bodies connected to all the bodies that can hold the higher frequencies. We can only send you so much frequency upgrades 
if you are still carrying wounds, if you are blocked in your feet uh, and that energy center is stuck, then you are carrying too much old energy. You back up into flames and fire and anger and frustration. You feel stuck and out of the flow. If you would see us and feel, feel us, call us and allow us to tap you with our noses, these we call our nostrums, but that's just your name. What we see these are is uh, like a wand. So we have a conical shaped nose or wand, and this is a projector, like a wand. You would point at something to send energy, like a, a, a TV remote. You would point at it, and you know that when you push a button, it is sending a signal. It is sending an invisible to you frequency with a particular code to your TV to tell it to do a particular thing. When you push a button on the computer or you click an arrow, you know that you are sending a command, a message, an order, a request of some kind. You don't get emotional about will the email go unless you're having some connection problem. When you have a connection problem, you get what? Stressed. Your internet is not internet. Inter. No, he, they said inner. Your internet <laughs> is, is, uh, is a source of um, stress for you, okay? And, and the stress, huh? oh, I love you, Perseus. The stress, estresa. The estresa is, um, that's Spanish, estresa, is, is uh, making your diamond net. They like to work through a net in your aura. And it's like, it looks to me like a, a spider web that has dew drops on it that are sparkling like diamonds. And then they, that's the energy that they are attempting to achieve within our auras. So the aura clearing and, and healing energies is how they do this. So she's showing that it's clogged like jello. You know, jello is not hard like a rock, but it's solid. You can't like, you know, talk through it, flow through it very well. So all of the magic that exists on the planet has been repressed. And the idea of a cone shape of any sort, if you have a, a something that can point, uh, the cone shape will amplify. We're getting our message today from Perseus, so I'm going to just take down this and bring you back to me for a moment. Uh, there's a reason for this. There's a reason there were cone-shaped hats. There's a reason that there's um, triangles here, you know, pyramids, pointed. This is a projectile of some sort, even here. <clears throat> the dolphin's nose is that. That's what she's telling us. Now, your pineal is a cone, and that's your third eye. And so your pineal gland is your wand. And what we do is we focus all of the frequency mechanisms that, that we have here. We can scan, we can send sonar messages, we can send frequencies that will transmute, like an earthquake can turn um, earth into liquid. Right? We can transmute these energies that are stuck within you. And you need clarity. So when we come, invite us, feel us putting the tip of our wand, our beautiful nostrum, putting it right on the foot of uh, the ball, right in the middle when you have your feet together here. And feel that, and feel that, and feel that. So I'm seeing pink dolphins, yes. She's saying, yes, the pink dolphins are doing this for us now. And now I'm seeing that the dolphin at the left foot is crystal, which would be clear or uh, could be a moon dolphin. Uh, this is what I call a moon dolphin, not clear. 
Uh, whatever you see or feel, receive that. Call this in and make sure that you can clear and receive and clear and receive and clear and receive. And this is a vital thing now. So as the dolphins are putting a frequency into your foot chakra, Perseus says, feel the moon above you, straight above your crown. Reach the cone inside of your head, your inner eye, your pineal gland. Feel it growing like a cone-shaped hat coming up, up, up like a temple, like a Thai Buddha. And that cone is reaching up and it's a sacred flame now and it's reaching higher and it's reaching higher and it touches the moon. The moon now is going to stay connected to you through this next 10 days as we do this journey. I am a moon dolphin. I reflect the moon, the wisdom of the moon. I bring the ancient wisdom back. I bring the feminine arts and the sacredness of life. The day-to-day life is so rich and full of sacredness, so full of messages, love, support. The creativity can flow to you and through you. Now bring back, leave a present, leave a gift in the moon. And we now ask that the moon goddess of the ancient Maya, Ishel, and my sacred guardian, patroness of my sanctuary, my home, here in Ishel's garden. She's the goddess of the moon, with the rabbit of fertility and abundance, pouring down moonlight, guiding you through her rainbow, awakening your third eye. The Maya revered her and loved her, built temples to her, did sacred crossings to her, in big woodcut canoes. Michel, we call you in for this sacred 10-day journey together. We thank you for your love, for your abundance, for your healing. She cares for women, which means she cares for the sacred feminine, the giver of life. She cares for those parts of each of us and bring soft, loving abundance. We give thanks to the sacred rabbit that in the moon, in this rabbit year lining our homes, we give thanks to this Taurus energy and Jupiter bringing good fortune and expansion in this next year to all of us in our home, in our wealth. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now feel all this shining down over you from the moon. The light comes out around you like a a diamond, like a pyramid out. If you put And we now are inside of this sacred diamond sphere and temple of light around each of us, around all of us. A cone of light above and below us, channeling energy in through the moon and out through the moon and in through the heart of the Gaia and out through the heart of Gaia. Now acknowledge all the realms within this earth star realm. We give thanks to the dolphin and the dolphin realms, the celestials, the elements. We give thanks to the animals, the trees, the plants to the insects, the minerals, the crystals, to the oils and every form of life within the earth, the Lemurians and the elves, the magical realms of the dragons and the unicorns, to the mermaids, the dolphins, the rays, to the craters and the meteors, to the vortexes within, through, and around. We are of the earth star, and we give great thanks. Now, this is your wand and your divine temple. We call in the ancient Mayan blue truth, heart of light. We ask to be guided by Jaguar, 
by the sacred ninth wave of consciousness bringing us into the temple of the descended god where we first came to this earth star we call on the magic the wisdom the light we free the codes that were destroyed once that will lead us to our light remind us to live in both worlds to walk in our magic and bring magic to the day and receive magic we are becoming the creator of a new world and we call to the ancient wisdom of all of these elements and elementals to come on this journey with us and so it is thank you thank you thank you now i'm going to call the mayan prayer of the seven directions and this is a pineal, this is a Sri Yantra, this is a temple. This is what it looks like inside of your head. Going up, 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 up. From the east, the house of light, may wisdom dawn in us so we may see all things in clarity. Thank you, thank you, thank you. From the north, house of the night, may wisdom ripen in us so we may know all from within. Thank you, thank you, thank you. From the West, House of Transformation, may wisdom be transformed into right action so we may do what must be done as a line to our highest good and what is optimal on our path of awakening at this time. From the South, House of the Eternal Sun, may right action reap the harvest so we may enjoy the fruits of planetary being live in joy and pleasure, aligned with our soul purpose, accepting our beautiful divinity in our path, in our grid, in our makeup. From below, house of earth, may the heartbeat of her crystal core bless us with harmonies to bring peace. From above, house of the infinite, where star people and ancestors gather, may their blessings come to us now, you feel yourself in this vortex, in the center of all of these divine directions that create this structure of light for our lives and our ability to create reality. From the center, allow your focus within your belly. Galactic source, which is everywhere at once, may everything be known as the light of mutual love. I am love. I am loved. I am loving. I am light. I am infinite. I am divine. I am a clear and open channel to my highest good, and I enter this 10-day blessed cocoon. In La Kechalakin, we are one. I am one with my highest self. I am one with my divine intuitive network. I welcome the dolphin realms as my guide. I welcome the ancestors, the guides, and the elements that are here for me at this time. Now, if you are interested in a, do a dolphin message, I will be receiving them now. They've moved into a beautiful vista and Okay, they want me to show you some pictures. So we'll go back here. <clears throat> I have a message for Julie. I don't know if you're here, Julie, but I'll tell you. Julie. Uh -huh. The dolphins are calling you, and you know it. They're around you. As you watch the sunset, you walk the beach as you are in your place of peace. You are healing where you are, that you are sitting in the pain. Move the pain and put yourself in the water. Get your root, your sacral, to the waist in water. Bring us in. You are a part of our pod. Come here as soon as possible that we may help you. But now if you can sink your sacral into water, Bring crystals in the, with you if possible. They're showing could be Epsom salt or salt crystals 
or could be if you're in a bathtub, literally your, your, your crystals. They're showing me a variety of crystals that will be helpful for you. There's clear quartz for sure. There's some a small harmony with love with, with uh, rose quartz, but more they're going back and forth from uh, crystal citrine, amethyst, crystal citrine, amethyst, and occasionally showing some turquoise. These could also be made into an elixir or vibrational or in some other way you could ab absorb this as a, a crystal elixir for the wounds in the womb. Herbs as well. Take some herbs. Take a sacred bowl. Bless the water. Burn it under the full moon. Let it fill with the energies of the full moon. Put it in the moon now. It can draw the moon full and then warm it gently. Uh, put some herbs in it. So put some chamomile flowers in it or rosemary, anything you have, sage, uh, mint, it doesn't matter. Whatever you have, whatever you can easily get, put it in the warm water till breathe that in. Breathe it in. Breathe it in. Bring it down through the meridians, and they want you to soak your aura with it by bringing it in, letting it go into the skin, and then taking the warm flowers and rubbing it on you. But you can put it anywhere you want. You have to rub it on your belly. You have to rub it on your womb. You have to release your mom. You have to release yourself. You have to release your daughter. You have to go back in time and spiral and you need, they're actually doing a spiral that would be, um, it's going this way. <laughs> so whatever that is <laughs> to you in orientation and rub it round and round and round. Send this back through your time space continuum to all of the women in your lineage and send it out yourself, your daughter, and your mother in this life, like three pegs, you know, on the table or the bottom of a pyramid, the three of you there, not a four, the three triangular. This is a wound in the womb of the waters where you are and in the land where you are. And part of your healing there is to really take it seriously that you need to soak that out of your cells and your mind. And you're doing it also for the land and the water then, because that will give you a different perspective and more energy that can come in. Namaste. Oh, lovely. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, um, then Perseus came through this morning and I think just said that each, each day we'll have a message. So tomorrow I'm a message is coming from the rainbow dolphin realms. And, um, I think it's going to be about our auras. Okay. And how healing them is, is like soul gifts, right? Now on Thursday, I am going to do my spiritual weather report that I do every week, but the moon goddess, the shell that you've just met, the moon rainbow uh, abundance goddess, has asked to do the spiritual weather report for you. So the full moon is coming on Saturday. That will be a lot of the uh, um, spiritual weather report energies. So come and receive at her insights. And then Friday we will have the pre-full moon uh, threshold or uh, oracle more with Perseus. Saturday is that special full moon day, and we're going to do a sacred cacao spirit ancient Mayan heart healing ceremony. And if would like to invite you, we're going to send out today your ingredients that you need for doing a, a cacao ceremony. So wherever you are, if you're able to order on Amazon quickly, you can do it there. I recommend organic always. Just get on Amazon, look for organic cacao powder, 100% cacao, not cocoa. Cacao is different. Cacao is not filled with dairy, has nothing else in it, has no sugar in it, has no milk in it. Okay. Then you're going to want to be able to heat up water 
and you're going to want to be able to blend or shake it because it's very difficult to get it to uh, smooth. I like to blend mine very high for a while. And I have a series of things I'm going to give you that you can put into it. And we will be doing a sacred ceremony because when you come on my retreats, we do one on the first day. This is a heart healing, heart opening ceremony. In March, it also turned into an inner child healing. We go into the womb of the earth. We go into the womb waters. We go in with a sacred goddess and we go in with ritual and uh, we have a cacao spa and a whole experience so this won't be that involved but we are going to be do that okay so then uh, on on uh, Saturday though uh, I am going to be doing uh, I might change that actually I might change that we'll see what happens that may come on Sunday but Saturday is the full moon so in the morning I am headed to a pyramid and I am going to do an event at uh, at sunrise on my beach around 5 to 5 30 a.m mountain time if you want to get up I'm going to be giving you all the details for this to follow along I'm going to be sharing the photos and the videos on uh, the evening of uh, Saturday so that's probably what we're doing and then Sunday uh, probably we'll be doing the cacao ceremony. So you'll get an updated schedule. Now I'm going to do the sunrise ceremony from the beach and uh, hopefully have a beautiful video. Uh, I could try to live stream it. I'm not sure if it will work. We'll see. And I'll be sharing with you that with you. And then I'm going to be headed to immediately after that at 5.30 a.m. I'm headed to Mayapan. Uh, who have talked to the pyramids and my upon has requested me to go there where I get to climb all the way to the top of a nine uh, wave step pyramid and meditate in the temple of Kuku Khan. It is profound and amazing. So I am also going to do um, a video up there and uh, draw down the full moonlight into the ancient pyramid and this is what we do when you come on retreats with me we go to these kind of sacred places and we're using the energies we're talking to the ancient energies that are there of light we're receiving codes giving codes we're talking to nature we get all kinds of messages like i did today with the uh, ladybugs <laughs> on on these events and these experiences birds or dragonflies come or something amazing happened last night a flock of, of flamingos flew over me while i was on the beach doing magic and dancing and talking to the oh, waters and i looked up and i was i i think i got a video it was overwhelming that was very magical to me because they live on the other side of me the flamingos so uh, they are big guides for me as well. They're really good at guiding us to be between the worlds. So I work with the energies where I live and the ancient energies of the ancient Maya that are of the light. And uh, then I will share all that with you. So then we're going to have uh, on Tuesday, actually, so we're going to have to have that date is Alon. So I think we're just going to push these things back. Sunday will be Monday, Monday will be Tuesday. And then we have some more speakers coming on and we'll have a final dolphin realm divination reading for you on uh friday june 9th so as many of these as you can come to live i would love to have you remember that every day you'll get a reminder if you're subscribed or you'll get a reminder from our email list about where to get the replay so the dolphins had asked me to share this with you and um this is the Ter teresa this beautiful beloved lady that came uh, is her her gift to me so i didn't share it with you guys um and they said you really need to do that now okay so i sent that out in an email but i'm going to share it with you quickly here because it may inspire you it isn't maybe you're you're not feeling called to come to the dolphin retreat uh and healing magic mayan retreat maybe it's not the right time for you maybe you were too afraid maybe you're called to do something else but this is about the bigger picture i want you to be inspired by somebody who took action and received profound results in such a, a strong way in such a short time that when you listen to your call of your heart, this is what I'm talking, divination of the divine, hearing the messages from everything around you. So the dolphin pods that she actually got to work with in March, and she's looking to come back in, in July right now. And um, they said they called her their dear friend. And so she does work with them. I do stay in touch with my clients. And she said, I will cherish my memories of this amazing experience forever. 
So she said, I hope you're well. I wanted to give you another gift. She gave me this beautiful chakra candle, which I've been burning in my casita, to say a thank you. This is my testimonial for your March 2023 Dolphin Healing Equinox Mayan Pyramid Retreat. Thank you so much, Nan. You're an amazing healing for your... And, for an amazing healing retreat, especially the support that you provided prior to the retreat, during and after. I've been to many retreats and I haven't experienced this much support and really grateful to Nan for all the support and love on my healing journey. I had the best experience ever as I was able to let go of so much fear and attachments. I received so much profound healing from the dolphins, the manatees, the jaguar, the iguana, the pyramids, the cacao ceremony, the cenote, and all of the elements. The healing I received started prior to the actual retreat from the dolphin recalibration meditation as I listened to it every day, and it helped me to let go of all my attachments and expectations that I initially signed up for the retreat. I flew from Australia and I didn't have the funds saved, yet I received an email regarding this retreat and I knew I needed this healing as I was miserable in my current situation at this time. So this is a common story, right? Oh my gosh, I wish I could do that. Oh my gosh, I know that would be the answer. Oh my gosh, I've been asking for the answer. This would be it. Get out of my ordinary life. Give myself a break from my busyness. Give myself a break from all of the things in my life that consume me. Get an outside perspective. Go to paradise, you know, be in sacred waters, be healed physically, mentally, emotionally, reconnect to my purpose, whatever it is. But then we go, well, look at I live in Australia. It's too far. It takes too long. I don't have the money save. I don't have a plan yet. And yet she knew. So this, if you get any kind of inspiration like this, you need to put into action something. Don't be silly, right? You just put out, yeah. She said, plus it'd been a six-year dream. So this was an answer to a six-year dream to swim with the dolphins in a more intimate way. Even though I've organized a couple of wild dolphin swims in Sydney and Melbourne, I don't get more than five minutes swim with them. And, um, and I hear this about wild dolphin swims. I've been on one. It's an exhilarating experience. And I think there's some uh, beautiful people doing them. And if you feel called to do one, please do. We are not, you are not allowed to touch wild dolphins. And I want to respect that. We work with somebody who uh, does healing work and energy work, is conscious and was called by the dolphins into purpose for bringing them together. So we work with them in a very conscious and beautiful way. And the minute you're with them and see what we experience, you will be blown away. Now they're going to be calling you. They're going to be talking to you. And you get three days. Uh, you get kisses, hugs, healing. We got all kinds of extra free time this last time too. And, and the way that they interact with you, doing whatever they want. It's just amazing. Plus, I'm going to be teaching you a lot of infinity light weaving to go with it. <clears throat> so this retreat was amazing. I had lots of shedding and releasing the past fears, anxiety, traumas, and negative energies. And this is what happens when you want to heal. So you might as well be here where I'm at giving you activations every day, loving you up, filling you with cacao treats, <laughs> opening your heart, uh, connecting you with the waters and the elements and having the dolphins help to recalibrate you. So I will cherish my memories of this amazing experience forever. I sing the songs every day. We, we have made amazing magical things come in that has become part of my ritual. And I I listen to the dolphin frequency meditation daily. I've also started seeing dolphin and other images in my mind. So here is Teresa and uh, cacao goddess Michelle and I uh, on our cacao day, our first day. And here's uh, Teresa and I ended up bumping into each other. This is our healing meditation for an entire hour. We float. The dolphins get to go do whatever they want. And we have many pictures of them coming up to all of us doing different forms of healing. But check this out. They're right there working on her crown chakra. You, The kind of experience is just mind-boggling. When I returned home, I did get into my old habits when Nan checked in to how we were processing from the retreat. I did tell her what happened, and she got me back on track, which I'm truly grateful for all her support. I will definitely be coming back to attend the retreat in July and next year. I just wanted to say a big thank you to you and Chris so much for a beautiful and amazing retreat that's opened new doors into my life, and it was an incredible experience. I will return and see you soon. So um, personally, I'm never surprised by these kinds of things, but it's such a beautiful thing. And she said it was a gift. So I wanted to share that with you. And remember, the healing begins the minute you hear the call from your soul for whatever you're feeling a call for. Maybe you're feeling a call to go to some other place. Okay. 
listen to it. It could be down the street. Go to the pond down the street. Go sit outside by a tree and don't look at your phone. Okay, get in touch with spirit and listen. You can't sit and be miserable if you're not letting all of these elementals around you help and support you. She healed before she came. Imagine if you put a deposit now or you came to the July retreat and you're like, yeah, I'm going to jump in right now. I'm ready for that leap right now. And then you go back and you start to integrate and you have the rest of this year because next year is a dragon year and it's going to get intense. This is the year to heal and to be nurtured and to come to your center. Okay. All right. Great. So here's a few more. There's Teresa getting kisses from the manatees. We, we love the manatees. The manatees are incredible beings that we do third eye activations with as well. So I want you to listen to your inner voice. Don't let it get ignored because of busy schedules or pushed off. She followed her heart that called her here. She didn't know how to get here. She had all the same reasons and things that you had. The other lady that got called very at the last minute had to find dog sitters and everybody has these things. Don't, they're not a block. They're simply logistics. When you listen to your heart, the path is opened. The doors open where there were walls and guides and guardians come in that are only there for you. The logical reasons of no, I can't. And again, I'm talking about whether you want to come to my retreats, whether you want to do my intuition school, whether you want to become certified as an Akashic light reader, or you want to go, you know, to some other thing. I don't care what it is. Despite the distance physically, despite the knowing where the money's going to come from, despite what anybody else thinks, despite your work schedule, you have to take the hand of spirit when it comes to call because the pieces fall into place and then you feel supported by the universe. Then you know that your soul is guiding you. Then you can let go and start living with more magic in your life every single day. Yes, thank you. We've got the rainbow dolphin starting to come through right now. I had the best experience ever and I'll be back soon. I want you to imagine yourself saying that. So if the dolphin pods are calling you, great, because I was just asking you to listen, okay? Listen and get your kisses. Here's our jaguar ceremony. That's when I got my beautiful jaguar initiation. <clears throat> so please come and join us. And this is the lady who jumped in at the last minute too. And we will be... Tuning into our joy and healing with the, I do a lot of healing work with you, okay? You get healing from me, you get love and you get treats and you get a loving environment and beautiful people. And these are very small, intimate retreats. They're going to be starting to get bigger next year. So this is an excellent time to come and get lots and lots of attention from me. Okay, so let's see where we are. I'm just flowing with the dolphins. Hi, Brittany. Woo, woo. You're hearing Destine, Destine. Absolutely. So Destine, my darling. I love it, Destine, because Destine is like destiny, and destiny is what we're all being called to. I love how people are using that word so much more now. It is not eight. Oh, you're so welcome. Thank you, Brittany says. Thank you for being a channel for magic, for message, for coming to me on my journey. Um, yes, yes, yes. Okay, so we've got Destine and Symphony, and we've got Olga. Um, Patricia's up here. I'm just going to put the names down here, okay, and then let the dolphins pick out. So Maren and Trisha, hello, sweetie, and Brittany. A uh, question for my mom and her antsy, restless legs. Ah, so Brittany's mom, does Brittany's mom have a name? Uh, antsy legs, well, <laughs> she, wants some, she wants to do something. She wants to go somewhere. She wants to make something happen, and she's not doing it. So um, getting up, moving around is great, right? Physically, um, doing things that make you feel like you're striding forward, but there's an inner thing happening there for her. That's, she's, she's not letting go of something. She's not letting herself move forward in some way. Okay. Do, 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 do. Sylvia Kim. Hi, baby. And so, oh, I love you guys so much. Okay. 
<sighs> wow. I'm looking at you guys. D? D Stinny? Like D, D E, E? I live where they speak Spanish and an E is pronounced like an I, so haha. <laughs> Or an I is pronounced like an E and, uh, and everything. Destiny. Destiny? Am I getting it right? Destiny. Destiny. Oh, use the E. Okay, use the E at the end and pronounce it like a Y. Okay. In French, I speak French. In French, we would say destine. Ah, bueno, it's destiny. Got it. Destiny uh, with the E. Perfect. Destiny. I love it. Okay. Yes, we will, we will, we will. So we got the rainbow dolphins here. We got some babies. <clears throat> Thank you. I will. I'm going to finish this. Hmm. We call on the jaguar, my divine guide. And we call on the dolphin realms, and we give thanks for being in this sacred space for all that has come through already from Perseus. We give thanks for this blessed moment and our opportunity at this time to see and welcome a new world, a new frequency, a new wave of bliss. The pink dolphins are showing me right now that all of us are here and we're floating in an ocean like this morning when I was, and there's a gentle wave coming across it. It barely makes us move just a little. It's coming through the whole field, the wave, and then as it comes to us, we gently kind of bob up and down with it. And I want you to receive this. There's layers of dolphins around us now. They're showing again also our orientation being just above the horizon. Below us, there are dolphin realms. Above us, there are dolphin realms through all of the channels. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Destiny, destiny. The rainbow dolphins want to share something for you. <clears throat> mm -hmm. They love your name. They're just nodding, nodding, nodding. Very, very vigorously nodding. Yes, yes, yes. We love your name. We love your name. We love your name. Are you living it? Are you living it? Are you living it? There's a new layer. There's a new layer. So like a rainbow is actually much bigger than we see. We only see maybe a small part or half. It's a circle. It's a sphere. It's always a sphere. It's a sphere even though it goes under into the dark or under into the underworld or under into the past. It's a sphere. It's connected. It's also the full color spectrum. So they're saying that that full color spectrum goes way beyond the few hues, the few frequencies that you can see. The dolphin realms live, the, uh, the rainbow dolphins live on all of these frequencies, all of these different color realms, all of these different layers. And you're destined to be a, um, a color healer, a channel for color, uh, for the frequencies of this. This is uh, something they're going to be teaching through my new class. Uh, it's like a color healing multidimensional thing, but they're showing like you, your destiny. They're showing this jumping over the rainbow, jumping over the rainbow, like the dolphins coming out and jumping over the rainbow and going down and immerse, immerse, immerse. Immerse yourself in rainbow colors. These are full color spectrum. 
They want you to say rainbow. Okay, so they said that you resonate better with the word rainbow with the understanding that you know that it goes way beyond your perception right now, but that's part of what's going to call you forward. It's expanding your vision. Thank you, thank you, thank you. They're showing me. There's a vision now. So they're jumping up within you. They're coming up. The, the rainbow dolphins seem to be coming in sort of through the navel, through this area, solar plexus, sacral. And this is profound because this is an area of very sacred area that connects to your blueprint and is um, often unex unexposed, unexposed, but too exposed, like the two extremes. It's either hidden or it's too open, and this needs strength. So they're coming in through that. I almost look, they're showing me little dolphins diving in through the navel. Now, they're coming up, they're gen joining a flow of energy, and it just looks like little tiny things. I don't know if they're itty, itty bitty dolphins or what they are, but there's a flow coming up your central channel. Your central channel is a channel of light that part of your light body structure, and it comes from way infinity up through the root, and it's going straight up the spine right through here and up and out. So there's a multicolored, it's mostly blues and pinks, blues and pinks, similar to this right here, blues and pinks, and uh, that flow. And so the rainbow dolphins are diving in through the navel, they're going in and they're, they're hitting this flow and it's going quite quickly. So it's like jumping into a current, and they're coming up. And they're coming up, 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 up. And now they want you to feel like that energy is lifting you up. It's lifting you up. And are you ready and willing to receive the healing from the full color spectrum, from the rainbow, from the rainbow, from the rainbow frequencies, not the rainbow in the way that you think of a rainbow, but in a palette a palette of rays, sacred rays, rays of creation, rays of frequency, rays of healing, rays that connect to different realms, rays that bring different um, radio stations, rays that bring different information in. The rays that you are most uh, destined to align with is, uh, this is a very, a very strong destiny thing. It's like almost if you allow this channel of these rainbow frequencies to come through you, you'll start to filter them. Which ones can you hear now? Which ones come in more more? Which ones are here for you? Which ones are coming? There's a lot of activity around the crown, the third eye. And as it opens that third eye crown, it's pulsing. It's like pulsing, pulsing right here, like a big diamond shape. And the rainbow's coming up and it's filling that. Like the Kundalini comes up and fills this area, the rainbow colors have to come. Now they're showing me that you're absorbing a lot of black. Black is not a bad energy. Black is a frequency. Black is all energy similar to white. So you're playing extremes right now, which is fine. Absorb what you want to know, what you need to know, what you have learned from resonating with that. It's like resonating a little bit with a black hole, not in a bad way, but a black hole absorbs everything, absorbs everything, okay? Absorbs all light, sucks it all into them. This is not a good place to play, and you need to get these frequencies to come. They provide a bridge and a rainbow bridge for you to, to flow out of that. However, you're not here by any kind of, of error. So the key is that you're done. You're done being there. You have a lot of wisdom. You want the dolphins to tap on the foot and give them permission to release that, release that, release the ties and the karmic attachments to that frequency, begin to flow back through. Remember, just the rainbow or the full color spectrum, just like any other, there's different ends of vibration. There's the, uh, the dark and the light and both hold everything within them, but they're both extreme. So you've had a lot of experience here, and what's very, very good about that experience is that now the individuality, not the extreme of the light being unconnected to the body. This is you riding the frequencies up here, bringing the body with you, up here, bringing the body with you, healing the body, bringing more of these frequencies that are higher, the violet flame is very, very good always, but they're showing the green violet ray, which is the eighth ray of creation. Make sure that you go to the shop.nanakasha.com. You get the free scale, the free rays of creation, all the free downloads 
um, posters and affirmations and declarations that are all for your empowerment. And take a look at the eighth ray. It is a cleansing and healing ray of luminous green and violet. It resonates with fluorite in the earth, as well as with amethyst and um, some other forms of green. Uh, however, that in particular is very powerful for you. So the rainbow dolphins are going to come in and they're going to flow and they're bringing more of this energy up. And then you can start having, they're showing latitude. Like you can start thinking and seeing more this way and then this way. You're not going to feel so stuck and looking in or stuck to or attached to in some way. There's some old hooks. There's some old bonds. Uh, everything is shifting and changing for everyone. So when we get to see some old bonds and some new uh, that are, are uh, growing and some that are ending, that's very nice. What I'm seeing is there's a few tendrils, but you do need more color therapy. You need more color light and more auric uh, frequencies. So the dolphins say, allow them to swim up you, allow them to move through your auric field and call on these different rays uh, work with the color spectrum. Just tune into it, give it thanks, give it permission to come through you. The dolphins will keep the flow going and they do are working with that aspect of you. They love that you are stepping into your destiny. So your destiny is not to judge, shame, or shun any experience you've had that feels dark, difficult, uh, painful. This is part of the truth of who you are and it's a very beautiful and important aspect of the entirety of your destiny that you must it, it gather up and with such deep love all of these things this is true for everybody thank you yes so the power has gone on and off at least four times since that began thank you very much so we're going to go ahead and uh luckily my beloved is so brilliant ready to receive for my highest good. E. So the last thing for destiny is, is that, that E that you seem that you, you are resonate with is the vowel sound for the crown chakra. So if you tone E, Thank you, thank you. So we all got a little chakra attunement. I hope you can hear it. Um, all right. Hi, Emma. Hi, Barbara Lee. Okay, I've got Barbara Lee, and I'm going to put Emma's name on here. Thank you, Destiny. That was quite beautiful. So, um, Patricia, there is a Patricia, right? Yes, here's Patricia. Okay, Patricia. The dolphins are calling for you next, so we're going to share. Uh, Bergstresser. Yes, wonderful. Patricia. You've gone out to sea, uh, Patricia. You've gone away energetically you, you've gone out so if we were all floating in the water right here you've drifted off or you've gone off or you're something about what you're doing right now in your life is you've separated yourself or you feel separated you feel isolated or you are isolated it, it isn't bad it's just a, a fact that you're like here's the pod and here you are over here there's some old patterns that they say they see that are weaving a very interesting, um, like ribbons. They look to me like colored ribbons that would be like on a flower crown with maybe some colored ribbons coming down. And this is sort of a, a festival, like a festival, 
feels like a May Day festival, very beautiful. Um, and those are coming out from you. So you're on your own right now, and there's something beautiful you've created. You have a flower crown, and it's flowing these rainbow ribbons out. And it's, it's sort of like you're watching them flow in the current. They are saying, though, that uh, although the, what I'm seeing is you're floating in, in waters like today that I was in, that was the calm, clear, beautiful, crystal, greenish, turquoise. You can see, I can see your legs, I can see your feet. The, wall, the floor is not that far. You're not struggling. You're not being buffeted about. Uh, this is a beautiful, clear image. And in intuitive work, when you're reading signs and symbols and and synchronicities, you want to see and you want to focus on uh, what is the quality of the vision you've been you're giving. It's very peaceful and calm. Again, just like today, I feel like I'm in the waters and I'm looking across and you're over here, Patricia, and you're just floating. All right, but you have this flower crown, reminds me of the crowns that my kids used to wear at Fiesta, and these long ribbons, but these are ribbons of, of light, these are ribbons from your pineal. They're showing me these are different colors. These are ribbons of the auric uh, full color spectrum. And they're streaming out from you now in a really beautiful way. They're streaming out in, into this, the waters, right? But the waters is representing the infinite field. There's a peace to this. There's a stillness to this. This part of you is not feeling in fear at all, just floating here and looking around. But there is nothing near you. So the message right now is that to enjoy this peace, to find a way to find this peace. This is where you're going to receive your most powerful messages right now. As we move over the next few days towards the full moon, there's going to be some interference. There's going to be like if you were floating here and suddenly something went by you, right? Woof, 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 like this, you know, and kind of rock the waters a little bit. Might be some fears come up. So uh, depending on who you are, maybe you don't like the water at all. But right now you're floating crystal clear, nothing there. And maybe, you know, you perceive something dangerous is coming up underneath you in your fears, in your shadows. They're saying that always you are floating in this crystal clear turquoise, supportive, divine, healing waters. And they're always there for you. This is your peace. And here you will be channeled right directly into your crown through these ribbons. So feel them, sense them, accept them, receive them. The dolphins say that when you're ready, they will be around. They're floating nearby. They're allowing you this peace. If you want support, you call for it. It will come to you. But you're now in a space of this 360 degree, okay, stillness. The waters also have a message. So because we work with the dolphins, we work with the waters, we work with all the elements. But the special thing about these waters that we work in, Caribbean and Gulf, cenote pure waters in the caves of the earth. And they hold ancient memories. They have Atlantean codes. They have healing codes. They have all the powers in the physical 3D of the salt and the cleansing and the purifying and pulling out. And they have all of the levels of the multidimensional uh, water element, ancient element. So they're saying that you're in a, if you come here peacefully, maybe go to sleep, floating here, and ask and give permission to yourself to receive the codes that are optimal for you at this time. These will be excellent for you to gather to receive as we move towards the full moon on over the weekend will be the fullest harvest. Harvest. So you don't need anyone else. You don't need anything else right now. You need stillness and peace at the very least when you go to sleep or meditate set times during the day. Namaste. So those ribbons that are coming are connected to the, ah, oh my goodness, that's so funny. I just noticed my mug are coming to you, okay, from your crown to you out into the infinite field and could connect to the rainbow dolphins, could connect to the full color spectrum, could connect to things, but you're not supposed to effort anything right now. 
Okay, thank you, Patricia. So if you can give me feedback, anyone, you're so welcome, Destine, um, to to allow us, uh, to allow me to, to, to just hear any feedback that you have, I love it. Okay, so we're gonna clear and cleanse and disconnect from Patricia, and uh, Barbara Lee is coming in now, Barbara Lee, and Barbara Lee, I hope I'm saying your name right, Barbara Lee, Barbara Lee. Um, Barbara Lee, there's a specific little dolphin. Ah, this little guy, beautiful. Uh, this sort of goldish dolphin in this very playful, happy diving pose. I always find uh, the different dolphin uh, scenes. So, that, so this holds the energy of the earth, right? The crystal that it's made of. It holds the energy of the dolphins and the dolphin realms. And it holds the energy of its pose. The rainbow dolphin is jumping up. This dolphin is diving playfully down in flow, curious. Okay, so this is your dolphin guide right now today. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So what is divination? Divination is the ability or the, <laughs> the willingness to receive messages from all of the elements and all the things we live with that we are connected to in some form, in some way, for our highest good and support and filter out all the ones that are not for our highest good and make us sick. Barbara Lee. Barbara. Barbara Lee. Barbara Lee. You need to say your name. You need to say your name. You need to say your name. You need to say, I am, I am, I am, and I am, and I am. And there's a lot of energy around the throat. And the dolphins, this particular dolphin is weaving. Um, very earthy energy, a little bit of gold energy, and uh, a lot of um, fossils, a lot of energy that holds little fossils, which is, you know, if we took the energy of what a fossil is, it's something ancient that we've held onto for so long that's become hard, and it's been preserved, and it's embedded. And they're saying, they're sending this, and they're looping it. And I'm seeing the energy come from the dolphins, and it's coming all around your neck, on the shoulders, and it's looping. And it's created this, like, almost Elizabethan collar or something, but big. And you have so many hooks and connected all around this area. The throat chakra is a communication center for both directions in a lot of ways, not just the voice. I have to cough, and this is very strangling, uh, the energies that you have. <sighs> yes. We're going to bring this in. So we're doing a healing here, and we're going to start to bring in some infinity light weaving. We're going to bring in. Oh. Okay. So. This one. So we're going to call on the obsidian now. We're going to hold this to the throat center and we're going to allow the obsidian and all of the energies of the ancient Maya, and the wisdom that this comes with, that they used it to scry, to reflect, to remove toxins, to see through the dark to remove the blocks, to connect you with your ancient powers. I am that I am, E.A. Escher, E.A. I give permission at this time for this to be released, for these fossils that have become hardened, these pains, these agreements, these soul contracts, these vows, let them now be released, we command at this time. Barbara Lee is free, Barbara Lee is free, Barbara Lee is free, and so it is. Now, there's some, I don't know, they're like a dark, dusky, pinkish colored dolphin swimming back and forth, creating an infinity flow, pulling some of these energies out. We're being some blue dolphins here. We have a little bit of violet dolphins, and they're all creating what I call an infinity flow or flower. It's a multi-dimensional, eight-dimensional weave coming together in the heart. We're doing this together with the obsidian, all these energies now activate to infinity. 
Cleanse, clear, renew, release all energies of bondage from the throat, heart, bridge, in this life and all others that have become fossils, hardened, and embedded as aligned with the highest good of Barbara Lee and all those here today. We ask that this be sent out to the planet, to all conscious beings, as an offer and a gift. We are free, we are free, we are free. And so it is. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, I'm going to let us sit in some healing energy right now with the Copal. And uh, with the power outages we're having right now, I have to turn something off. I'll be back in one second, and I want you to sit here. I'm going to light the Copal. And I want everyone to really feel this powerful throat healing that's happening. And when I return, I'm going to do several more dolphin readings. We can get this to light, please. Copal is a powerful Mayan resin from a tree. It's used in the ancients, used now. Cleanses, clears, protects us. Did you see that flash? I was seeing flashes of light right here. I don't know if that was in my realm or in theirs. Okay, so everyone focus on your throat center. All this light going through it and the dolphin realms coming in, whatever well, ones that are optimal for you for clearing and cleansing.
Okay. Keep cleansing. We can keep this going here. Get a sip. Okay, my beloveds. Woo. So we are going to continue. That was a very big healing for everybody. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Wow. Um, thank you, Barbara Lee. So Emma, Emma <coughs> Sims, Emma Sims, Emma Sims. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh. <laughs> All right. So, Emma, you have rainbows coming from your throat. Is it really lovely? I don't. Uh, maybe this just helped free that, but it's more like watching a rainbow come up, kind of from your heart, and then come out from your throat like a little big arch. And the dolphins are coming up again, sort of similar, like, and out. So you have a new rainbow bridge opening for your voice, for your speaking, to be seen, to be heard, to express something very colorful, very beautiful, very joyful. They're jumping, they're jumping. They're bringing tons and tons of that frequency of joy. So it's important for you to speak now. Now, that might be by writing something. That might be by speaking your own truth to yourself. That might be it, whatever. It can come through in many ways, but this is a joyful release of creative, full-color things. Wonderful. Ooh, I love that. Thank you. Yes, thank you, thank you. Enza, Enza, Enza. I just have to check this off. Hi, Enza. <laughs> All right, so I'm just moving through this at the speed the dolphins want to deliver. We had a, wow, I'm starting to settle down in here. Oh, that's interesting. The power tried to come back on there for a second. Um, <sighs> Woo! You guys, this is awesome. We really are raising the power here. Enza, you're swimming. Your head is swimming. You're thinking too many things. They're showing the dolphins are going around and around and around and around your head, but it's not in a, um, like, oh, a healing spiral or something. It's just spinning. They're, you're not coming out of a loop. And that's okay because we're coming out of the energies of watching endings and beginnings and being in the zero point, not really certain, and a lot of feeling like there, there, there's a lot of readiness happening, but not a lot of forward movement. The forward movement has just begun energetically, and we are moving towards the full moon. Things are building, building, building. Okay? So you got to get out of the spin. They're showing that they can't even turn and look at you. They're just, you know, like your assignment is just a, ooh, there's a current going around here. They're showing it right here about the brow, okay, temple, which is a profound space that's spinning, okay? So if you don't feel like you're thinking, 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 um, allow yourself to recognize it. So drop in right now and stand in the center. And then begin to see yourself just as an outline of your head and your shoulders, just allow your awareness to focus on if you imagine that, okay? And then just watch. What I see inside of you is dark blue. There's light blue around the edges. You're glowing a little bit of this blue. And then right here, <clears throat> the dolphins are spinning, spinning, spinning around you. The flow that they're in, you know, like the water or whatever, the element that they're in, everything is just blues, degrees of blues from dark at the inside to lighter on the outside. And so that, that gives you something else to look into. Look into blues, look into blue is communication chakra, right? This is another level of blue. This is happening all around your third eye. And so there's uh, 
it's hard for you to receive messages when the flow is, it's like having something spin and you're waiting for the bingo ball or something or the roulette wheel to stop so you know what it is, but it doesn't stop. So it means that there's a lot going on, but you're not able to receive and you're not able to give. And so uh, pay attention to that. They said the minute that you see and feel yourself inside of it, you just acknowledge it. You don't try to stop it. Don't get mad at it. Don't judge it. They want you to watch it. They want you to, to see it and hear it and understand it. They want you to witness it. And they want you to, to, to watch it with an open, compassionate heart. Just like, well, what is this? Because only then you're going to be able to see, and you're going to be able to see more about yourself than you've ever felt before. You're going to see with a level of an inner eye that just accepts what is instead of gets mad at it and then gets sucked down to these lower places. Once you see it and sense it and acknowledge it, that it's there, it could be the conscious mind spinning. It also looks like there's a lot of under subconscious things spinning. And these are things that need your attention. It may just be sitting with it and saying, I see you, I accept you, I acknowledge you, and I release you now to my highest wisdom to transmute in whatever way is optimal for my highest good at this time. Feel the dolphins tapping your foot, your balls of your feet, and you release it down into your earth star. The spin will start to slow down. There'll be more coherence, but you don't want to force it. You want to watch it and enter into a relationship with it from where you are right now. It's like, you know, something that's going fast already. You have to get up to speed and jump on. So just allow yourself to watch it and then you can just accept it. There's a lot of power and energy there, but it's being focused on keeping you in a loop and it's pointless. And this is something you must master. This is a mastery thing for you that will become very, very important in everything you do. Ends up beautiful. Well, I think that was probably relevant to many, many people here. Anybody else felt resonance? Now remember, just because I don't say your name, uh, it doesn't mean that that reading wasn't for you or you got something from almost all of them. Okay. Um, Symphony, 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 symphony. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, okay. So, symphony, you, um, whoo, that was hot. I didn't realize how hot it was. I was holding the obsidian heart for the reading with Enza, and um, it was like, put me down and wanted the rose quartz heart. These are, this, this heart is also a Gaiadon heart. It's a mystery school heart. It's very, very special programming. Symphony. I love your name. The crystal dolphins are here. The moon dolphins are here. I'm sorry. The white dolphins. So the moonstone kind of dolphins. They relate to the moonstone in the earth. The moon in all its phases, but most powerfully now, moving into the full moon. Large and white, and there's rising behind you just one large dolphin. As she rises, I see sort of an ocean. I see the moon shining across the ocean. Behind you, over your right shoulder. The dolphin is almost like a statue, like an enormous white stone, moonstone statue of a, of a dolphin jumping up. And you're standing looking. It's like a selfie almost. Yeah. <laughs> they said, yes, this is, this is a selfie with the dolphins. They're going to give you a snapshot of where you are right now. So you can be in it and feel it around you as I describe it to you, or you could be looking at it, or both. And when you repeat this, everybody, especially if you get a reading, but anything you resonate with, come back, listen, write it down, because you will hear things you didn't hear. It'll mean something different, and you're only just beginning now, as this message is received through me, for you, for your highest good, 
they know that the frequencies now can enter your field and have more impact. So it will integrate from this moment for hours or days, weeks, months, I don't know. Things don't usually take years anymore, but in some, some deeper patterns, this could be a layer of it. All right, so I think this is what we're gonna do with the rest of you. They're saying we're gonna do dolphin selfies with the rest of you that we can get to right now. So starting with Symphony, I see you. And it's like you're standing on a beach at a resort town and you're smiling and the sun is shining very bright. It's high. There's a few puffy clouds, blue sky that's coming across the ocean right into your, your right shoulder. And uh, the rest is, you know, sky and a little bit more, but you don't really see much of that. Um, and there's enormous white dolphin is jumping from the left side up behind you, like you were if you were standing in front of them. And it's very static. And um, going to now just hold this. This is very similar to the dolphin we're seeing. He's bringing you. Uh -huh. This is our moon dolphin. She's a guardian dolphin. Uh, she's always there. That's why she looks like a statue. She's there, and sometimes you don't see her. Most of the time you don't see her. You don't believe in her. You've disempowered her. She uh, feels like a woman on the planet in a, in a human body where you have no respect, you have no power, you know, have no uh, ability within the culture to make a profound difference. And yet you hold the wisdom in your womb of the ages of creation. You hold the secrets of love and you hold the secrets of birth. And those secrets must be born. So I'm here. I'm always here. Just like many women are ignored or unseen or unvalued. That's what you've done for me. But it isn't something to feel bad about because the biggest part is that you've done it for you too. So both of us need to be revered, to be loved, to remember that our sacred feminine is the power that birthed the world, is the power that will give shape and will nurture that which is being born. I am ready to become a very active guide in allowing you to accept your sacred feminine, to swim in the waters of the moon that aren't always clear, but are always purifying, and to let me show you the way up, bringing the intuitive side up and through, because she's coming up from the left side, crossing right through at the head where her nose or her head comes up right here, right out. Dolph, Delphi, I think her name is Delphi or Delphinum, something like that. <clears throat> she's has been with you as a guardian type of being for many, many lives, but you had a life together in a physical body in ancient Greece. Beautiful. Wow. Okay, next snapshot is for Marin. Marin, Marin, C. N, N, or in, or of. So you are of the sea. You are in the sea. And this sea energy is very important for you. They don't think that you're acknowledging that enough. I don't know if you like oceans, <laughs> um, but uh, you don't necessarily have to get in them, but it would be very, very powerful. Uh, you want to see them and think about them, drink in the wisdom of them in the sea, in the sea. And then the mar is again like a, they're showing like a deep blue. So like when I was out today, it was like crystal clear, light green, and then a little bit <clears throat> different green and darker blues. And I could look across and it changed shades until it got into a dark blue. It's like that dark blue on the horizon. The sea is very deep. You are very deep. And you've made the mistake of, they're saying, quitting the deep. 
So there's deep that's difficult and deep that's hard and deep that's painful. And then there's deep that's important and deep that's powerful and deep that's magical and deep that's mystical and deep that is filled with fear or shame or guilt. And there's deep that's full of anger and victimhood and shackles, uh, depression and craving. There's some regret, 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 and that loops back up to disappointment and loops down to misery and then loops over to blame and then comes all the way up into pride. So there's like a ping pong through states of, of force, states, heavy states, emotions. And then the deep, deep, deep is where you are naturally very comfortable. So you could go deep into your heart or deep into your soul or deep into your powers of your uh, inner eye and travel to other dimensions. You could go deep into your past or your perceived uh, wounds. You could go deep into the future, into the potential lives and timelines that you could now select, choose, or review. So the aspect of you being deep is in you and you want to look at it in all ways because it can be used on either direction, like all vibrational scales. Deep could go deep into the dark, deep into the heavy, deep into the difficult, deep into the wounded, could go deep into the powerless, deep into the, um, you know, not speaking up, deep into the holding back, deep into the not feeling worthy, deep into the not receiving, the deep into the not asking, deep into, and then it, all the way as you come up out of that, they're showing you, use the dolphin frequencies to lift you from the lower states. They'll be sending these signals. They're staying far away from you right now, and they're just watching, and they're saying, if you can remember to just say, I'm ready to lift up, then you could see or sense these little rings of light coming all around you, slowly lifting you up to scale. So make sure you go to the uh, shop.nanakasha.com. You get the scale of consciousness. It's free and it looks like an ocean. So you want to get from wherever you're feeling down here, then they're going to show you, but you take it in steps and then come to neutrality, come to courage, come to a space where you can rest, receive empowerment, get inspired, feel positive, optimistic, start to trust the deep abilities, the deep energies, your ability to sense and see things deeply can also be dialed in. Now, you've done it all your life. You've dialed deeply into places. You haven't been properly trained in this life to handle your deep powers. So I would recommend they're showing you in classes like Hogwarts or, you know, waving a wand or taking, you know, divination classes or doing things that will open the faucet for you to connect to this because the deep buried things are also part of this. So that's your keyword right now. That's your snapshot and deep. Those deep, dark blue waters is where you are both empowered and disempowered, stuck and have the answer to that. Stay. Thank you, Symphony. Trisha, Trisha, Trisha. Hola, hola, Trisha. Trisha, Trisha, Trisha. Trisha, Trisha, water. So Trisha, the snapshot I'm seeing of you is in a fountain with water pouring over your head. You're smiling or laughing, you have your eyes closed. It's a, like a snapshot where you're, ha, ah, you're sort of, your shoulders have scrunched up and you're in a fountain in Italy, like an old marble fountain. It's a fountain of, um, alabaster, that pure white stone from Italy. And there's dolphin statues coming up out of this big 
basin of the fountain and they're part of the fountain. The water's coming out of three different dolphins that are carved going up their mouths. So the water for the fountains coming out of the mouths of, they're kind of the old fashioned looking dolphin style with a bigger head and they're pouring down over you. You're standing there like laughing, just being showered, showered, showered with so much abundance, just sparkling sun on you. It's a joyful uh, bath pouring down into you. Uh, so take in the different elements that came through in that and sit with it, that you're being showered. There's three dolphins. There's this purity to the alabaster. That's one of the elements that came through for you in this reading. So you want to look, look up what is the symbolism and meaning of alabaster or how does it feel to you? What about the idea of Italy uh, being immersed in this water of an ancient fountain in a gorgeous, it's like something in Rome with these waters pouring down on you, joyful, happy, the sun shining, receiving more than you can imagine, joyfully integrating it being immersed in this abundance. Namaste. Wow, that was nice. Thank you. Thank you, Trisha. Okay, Sylvia, Sylvia, Sylvia. Let's see here. What's for Sylvia? Bast. So Sylvia Bast wants to bring a message to you. Uh, this kitty cat <clears throat> from Egypt. Bast. She has a message for you, and she asks you to go find it. Kind of a cat thing. Pet me, and then you start to pet them, and they walk just out of your reach, and you take a few steps. Pet me, and they slowly lead you somewhere. She wants to lead you somewhere. There's a very strong message for you. And one of the messages is to get up and move. So she's going to do that exact thing to you. The dolphins are actually here too. They're pulling a chariot and they're behind you. So they're not pulling the chariot with you in it. They're behind you like they're nudging you forward, like we're moving down this path, get walking for faster. And in front of you is Bast going, come over here and you move forward. And she gives you a little bit of healing and then she moves just a little bit ahead of you. And that's the path that's opening for you. So listen, that means Bass is a pure healer. She's the purest healer energy that I've encountered um, on the planet as a healer. A healer is someone who makes whole and isn't always going to be doing things that make you feel good because, you know, if you've ever been through physical therapy, you're like, ah, this hurts, this hurts, this hurts, this hurts. I don't want to do it. And they're like, do it anyway. Um, thank you. Okay, Sylvia, thank you very much. Now... Olga, 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 little baby over here wants to talk to you. So we have a little baby uh, pink dolphin energy coming through for you, Olga. If you could just open your palms, Olga, be aware that these are part of your crown chakra, these two palm portals here. Feel this tiny little pink dolphin coming into this. As you put your hands together, you create a sphere between the two. Energy can come through in either direction, through the palms. And this little pink dolphin wants to come be here with you. Thank you. We ask for Olga's highest good that this healing come. There's something new, something birthing, something very beautiful, filled with love. And it's been placed into your hands, but you're not receiving it. Look for something filled with love. It's a tiny, tiny little idea. It's birthed or ready to be birthed. You may not know yet what it is exactly, but you need to start to acknowledge that it's there. Receive it. Feel like you're being gifted it, holding it in your hands. Maybe you would draw it in through your heart, uh, to your heart center, through your left arm. Maybe you circulate that energy up into your heart and around through the palm in either direction. And this little pink dolphin baby is going to bring the energy that will help to move you into a place where you're going to be aware, you're going to receive it, you're going to allow it to manifest. So it is a matter of both you receiving first and then allowing yourself 
to be part of that process of creation. You receive the energy. It goes up to your heart. It gathers who you are, what's your purpose, what is it that you're most focused on now will be what creates down the right arm through the masculine in to this palm again. You're in the process of birthing something. Please receive it. Stay. Beautiful. Oh. Okay, good. That was... I don't know who that was. Okay, let me take a peek here. How are we doing, everybody? It's about time to wrap up. Let me see if there's anything else coming through. Olga, we did Olga. Okay, looks like we got most of you. Oh, hi, Autumn. I didn't see you. Jennifer and Autumn. Let me look here. Jennifer and Autumn. Uh, Symphony said, wow, incredible. You described what I was experiencing. Oh, good. Wonderful. <laughs> uh, so cute. Thank you, Olga said. You're welcome. And thank you. Very appropriate. I'm hearing it. Namaste, Sylvia said. Perfect. Okay, so we're going to do uh, Jennifer Wilson and um, Autumn. I couldn't read what I wrote, Autumn. Sometimes it's hard to function in the 3D. <laughs> okay, good. So the first thing that the dolphins are asking from you, uh, Jennifer, 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 Jennifer. Hello, Jennifer. We're going to connect heart to heart, higher self to higher heart self. Allow the dolphins to swim around you. Feel as if they're swimming through your heart, bringing you in connection to your higher self and weaving a beautiful figure eight back and forth. You're under the water. You're in deep shark infested waters. They're showing that you need to have this heart connection, knowing that there's this part of you with wisdom and love, holding compassion all around this. Like fish in a tank, Outside that invisible barrier of the glass tank is support. Is uh, There's a huge angel, uh, angel dolphin, a blue angel dolphin. And it's uh, also outside of that, there's other guides and love. You are in this tank. It's very vast. It's big. It's dark blue. And it looks like we're watching sharks swim in a circle all around you. So you're in the center. And you don't seem too, like, panicked, but it is like we're looking at it from underwater up. And you're just sort of floating there, and this is your current snapshot. This is the situation energetically in your life. You feel like you're in a contained space that you would like to be free from. Between you and that freedom, that help that's outside, uh, maybe the ladder that's over there on the wall of the tank, uh, are all these sharks. These could be mental blocks and fears. These could be perceived blocks with people, people who are manipulating you, people who've blocked your power, your uh, situation with money, anything, okay? This is, the sharks are representative of what is in your emotional field and what you're floating in the center of. And it could be that these, and they're circling very slowly. They're not like the other one where I saw the spinning around the head. They're circling very slowly, but it's it has you locked in. Uh, it's very a wide band of them swimming around you. None of them are coming near you. So energetically, your space right around you is clear. You're not in any danger, but you are perceiving that if you take action towards your freedom, if you take action toward your support or your help or lifting yourself out of a contained way of living, a contained way of living, a contained way of thinking of yourself, you've, it, you're ready to break free of that. You're ready to be released, you know, like a little baby fish. You're big enough now to leave the tank and go out, okay? And so, but you, you are currently 
perceiving all of the reasons why that it's dangerous for you to leave your comfort zone, uh, to get your freedom, to receive the help. And the important thing is, is think about that giant, enormous blue angel dolphin that is watching you, that's waiting for you. And there's also no sense that there's real danger in any of these energies. Everything is blue. Everything is circulating peacefully. There's no fighting. And so it's going to be your choice when you begin to move because similar to the Joseph Campbell, uh, doors will open where you once saw walls. When you follow your bliss, you listen to your inner guidance. You live your archetypical hero's journey. You join the quest that your soul is on and you live it from the purpose, not from the pain. And then you will walk through, you will part these fears, you will walk through, you will float through, you will climb the ladder and the energies are there waiting for you. They are ready to lift you up. There's a lot of guardianship. There's a lot of love. There's a lot of Syrian energy here. Namaste. That was quite beautiful. Thank you, Jennifer. And we're going to now end with Autumn. Namaste, Autumn. So nice to connect with you. It's been quite a while. So as we all receive these final messages from our Dolphin Divination Day and, and our beginning, make sure that you come back and you watch the message from Perseus. Um, <laughs> that was amazing. The other uh, downloads and information and healings we received as a group. <clears throat> and, uh, and I will see you tomorrow and all the way through the full moon. Uh, cacao ceremonies and all kinds of wonderful things, guests, my and third eye activations, working with the elementals. So Autumn, they're showing you are standing here like um, a revered woman. I don't know if it, I would say queen. You look like you're standing in the center of a circle in a forest in a leopard gown. It's very rustic, like a like a shaman shawl, like a leopard skin, but it's draped all the way down you, tied at the waist. You have a lot of painting and, and jewelry and ceremonial things on. On the head, there's not a lot. There's a few feathers hanging down. They're hanging from the temples and the hair. They're hanging from the ears. Uh, and you're standing almost like you're posed in front of a, a fire that isn't lit. It's a fire pit. It's a circle. Uh, like you might, uh, like we do, and we go to ceremony and we'll sit in circle in the jungle around a fire or in a temple or different things during our ceremonies. But it's almost like a, like you're posing for a picture of something like, oh, here we've we've set the stage, and I'm I'm dressed for the role, uh, but there's no people there, there's no activity, it's not actually happening at the moment, and um, now you have an opening. And no, you're just standing there, you're posing, you're still like, I got everything ready. You're really beautiful. Everything is perfect. It almost doesn't look real because there's no dirt. It's more like a model posing. Uh, everything has a sense of being a, a model, you know, not like a real place. It's more like uh, something about everything looks right, but it's not real. It's a stage prop, not a real stone or, or, you know, it's not a real shaman's dress. It's a, it's a something. It's not wrong. What it's telling you is that you have the props. You, you have this aspect of yourself that feels like it's ready. Uh, it's, it's wants to be seen. It's, it feels properly dressed, but you're going to find very soon that it's like a mask that it's going to be pulled back. Okay. Here I am thinking this was what it's like to be awakened, to be uh, a goddess, a shamaness, um, in Maya, the X is pronounced sh or so. And so they spelled shaman with an X, not S H and it's shaman, shaman. Uh, and it's an X though, and the X has a lot of power to it in terms of it being the crossing point, a star, the sacred pattern uh, of rhythm and time. 
and all things that the Maya measured through that many ancient cultures, the net, the grid around. So now you're changing. It's like your clothes are changing from a leopard. Like you see in a catalog, they'll say, would you like the pink or the purple or the one with the daisies or the ones with the, you know, with the roses on it? And it's the same picture, the same woman, the same dress, but the color of the fabric changes or the print of the fabric changes. So they're showing that now that it's changing to this snake pattern, the sacred crossed uh, diamond shape pattern. This holds all the secrets of time and measure. So these are, are roles you've played, um, things you've prepared for, and now it's time to pull that back and get dirty. Like come off the stage, come out of the photo shoot, and get into the real jungle, get into the real the earth of what you are here to do. Do the ceremonies, take it deeper, receive the wisdom, but don't wear it as a skin or a banner. Don't worry what other people think. Take this to the next level. You're very connected to ceremony and you've prepared and gathered everything. Namaste. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We give great thanks to the jaguar and the dolphins. We give great thanks to Ishel and the moon. We to Perseus and to the rainbow dolphins, to everybody here, to everyone that has spoken to us and through us, to this divine chamber of diamond light. We give thanks for this healing to our aura, to all levels of our light body and light being. We accept that all that has been released, renewed, and remembered within us aligned with our highest good and what is optimal for each of us in this moment, be realized, received, gratefully, downloaded. Receive and allow everything, whether you understand it right now or not, as the greatest gift you've ever received. Let it take its time to soak deeply into you, be bathed in the harmonized ray of the full color spectrum. Allow the moon to guide your path, growing ever bigger. The abundance is here and ready to come to you. Walk in peace. Jump in joy. See through all with the joyful perspective and allow the abundance of the path you walk right now with all of us to be supported by these elements and those that are there for you from the ancient Maya the sacred waters, from the beautiful beings, the ladybugs, the bees, the dragonflies, the iguanas, the manatees, the dolphins, the sea lions, from the mermaids and all of the magical realms, from the roots, the trees, the tree of life that we are a part of. We walk in this magic together leaving this road in the Akasha so all may join us who wish to walk in light and love, healing their heart, remembering their truth, and receiving all that is required, the divine life your soul designed. I receive, I accept, I relax, and I walk this path. We call the dolphins in one more time to open our foot chakra, and we release and receive in divine flow up and down our pillar of light. So it is. May this circle be open yet unbroken. And this beautiful healing, these amazing magical energies go with us in every breath, in every step, in every thought, in every touch. You are a radiant being of light. What are you radiating? What are you putting into your words? What are you touching your food or your children with? And how are you thinking about yourself? Thank you for joining me. I will see you tomorrow. Namaste. You're so welcome, Autumn. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, oh, amazing. I love that symphony. Oh, amazing. Ah, bless you, bless you. Oh, good. I'm so glad. Olga said, thank you. That was beautiful. I loved it. And yes, I'm feeling I want to start something new in my career. Excellent. And Symphony, thank you. Ah, ah, amazing. I love that word. 
Jennifer sent, ooh, fairies and butterflies and dolphins. Thank you. Receiving with gratitude, Olga said. Hi, Ocean Goddess. All right, everybody. Namaste. I'm so glad that uh, we had the power to be able to stay alive. <laughs> Namaste.